how are you? Good to see you. Um, yeah, welcome to um, my chat. My name's Kai Graham, as you know, because this is from my group. Um, we're, we're, today we're talking all about social media. Um, why? Why? Because I, it's probably one of the biggest questions I get asked. It's, it's um, one of the things that many parents aren't quite sure about. They don't quite know what the rules are, what the regulations are, what the hell's going on. So um, today I am going to be talking all about social media. Wait for it. The good. The bad. And the ugly. So that's that's what we're going to be talking about. And um, I'm hoping that uh, if you have questions, you'll ask them. Um, even if you're catching up on the replay, please, um, I, I will sort of catch up with you at, at a later date. And I will answer as many of your questions as I can. Um, so let's face it, social media, love it or hate it, it is not going to go away. And 91%, I think, I'm, I'm going to have to go through my notes here it's it's all um i what, what i want to do is not miss anything out but 91 percent of all 16 to 24 year olds use the internet for social media 91 percent which is a big contrast 51 percent of 55 plus year olds so that sort of gives you an idea M many of our kids um have grown up not knowing any different. They, they sort of have grown up with it. We, on the other hand, have been caught unawares and many of us, if you sort of, uh, remember, I often refer to um, the only form of communication I had with my mates after school was a phone on the hall table. So things have changed and many of us parents are playing catch up and we don't know what the bloody hell's going on. So I'm just going to try and lift the lid and give you areas to look out for and stuff to concentrate on if that's all right, because it can be a bit of a minefield and it's quite hard. Um, what is social media? Well, it's it's really a way of people communicating, getting on, networking through um, a digital platform. Simple as that. It could be a device. It could be, well, it is a device because that's really it, but it could be an iPad. It could be a desktop. It could be a laptop. It could be iPads, phones, you name it. But that is how our kids interact socially on a massive scale. And invariably, there are many, many plus points about um, social media. It creates, I'm going to clutch my cup of tea, um, the, it, it's, it creates a sense of community. It sense, creates a sense of belonging. Um, some kids sort of are maybe introverted or a little bit shy. So it creates that sort of sometimes false, if that's the way you want to look at it, um, environment where they are able to belong. It is also a great source of information and it can be a, an area for self-expression. Um, all of which is, can be very positive. Of course, all of which can be very negative. But then again, so can playing in the playground be very negative. You can get bullied, you can get pushed around, you can fall off the monkey bars. So it's, it's just a matter of being able to navigate those areas and navigate what's, what the hell's going on. And... and Sometimes I think it's we have a fear of not knowing um, many of our fears in life, not just about social media, but many of our fears are um, based on what we're not too sure of, of that might happen or full of uncertainty. Lisa, thank you for joining us. Um, so what I want to do is sort of just lift the lid a bit and sort of say, do you know what, social media actually isn't that bad, but there are pitfalls and I would like to sort of you know, if you're feeling in the dark, then let, let's sort of lift the lid on that. So I've, I've said a couple of the plus points. There are quite a lot of minus points as well about the about social media. One of which is 70 percent. Or there is a 70 percent increase of depression and anxiety. Um, in the last 25 years for young people. 75% increase on depression and anxiety. And I think that surveys have been done and a lot of that is to do with social media. Mm, that's a bit scary. So what do we do as parents? How do we help? 
Well, the big thing is understanding. Because I tell you what, and, and, and what many people have told me and what many um, reports and statistics are telling me is trying to restrict your child on social media ain't going to help. I'm afraid that's not the way to go. So what do we do? Well, I tell you what, the first thing to do is let's start understanding it. Let's start getting a handle on what it is, why our kids use it um, and what we can do to support them in order to... Um, make sure they don't fall into the pitfalls that um, that are rife. Seven in ten children say that um, they have been exposed to cyberbullying, which is basically online bullying, which is really quite tricky because the majority of it is anonymous. There is a massive, as I've just said, 70% increase in the last 25 years of anxiety and depression. Many studies say that social media is more addictive than alcohol or cigarettes. Nine out of 10 girls having watched social media now say that they are unhappy with their body image. Kids have the fear of missing out, FOMO. They are robbed of sleep because they're watching too many YouTube videos, which then is the vicious cycle. So what the hell's going on? And how do we help our children? How do we support them? Well, the first thing is, as I was sort of saying, is, is understanding social media. Let me take another slurp. Understanding social media in what's all the fuss about? Why are our kids so into it? Why is it so addictive? Why is there such a draw? What is it about social media that our kids can't live without? Well, it, it, it is actually, um, it, it, it's a lot to do with not biology. Well, I suppose it is biology. It's, it's, it's chemical reactions. Is that when, when kids see that their profile picture has had more likes or the fact that they get interaction and comments and likes on photos and, and sort of stuff that they put up, it, it, it um, triggers the, 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 the sort of bits in the brain that need social validation, that need the feeling of being valued. And this sort of just gets the endorphins going. And so children, you know, well, anyone, it's not just kids that are, you know, that watch have social media it's it's that need to sort of to, to keep on feeding on um, the reward the reward system of being liked that feeling it's a quantitative measure let's face it of peer approval and so for kids that can be you know it, as I said it's it's how many likes they've received or how many times someone has downloaded or whatever they've uploaded or you know it, and so it, it, it is something that triggers in their brain and, and the more it's triggered, the, the higher levels of the endorphins and stuff like that, so the more they need to feed on it, the more they need to receive that validation um, that, 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 they are, that, that they are receiving. It makes them feel less isolated. As I said, it's a plus point. It makes them feel, um, you know, as, as, as though they belong. Now, okay, we, Social media, internet is great. It, it boosts creativity. I mean, you know, just watching our kids design things and edit things and, um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see their creativity, but it's also important to try and keep that balance going and, and make sure that um, they are receiving also the right sort of validation. But we will touch on that in a minute. When asked why they use social media so much. The responses that teenagers gave were, well, it was a, a way to sort of team up with their friends. It was a, a, a way to talk with their friends. Um, it was a, a way they were able to have group conversations because social media allows you to sort of have a number of you. Anyone that has a family WhatsApp group will understand that is the fact that you can keep everyone informed. You can keep everyone sort of on the same page. Um, many use it for online current events, uh, be that for God, come on, you know, we're sort of, you know, following um, stuff on the news, which isn't always positive, to listening to the fake news that Donald Trump doesn't like terribly much. Um, and so, you know, so they do keep abreast with what's going on in the world, which is wonderful because, you know, when I was a kid, you wouldn't catch me 
picking up a newspaper. Well, it was always out of date by the time it came to me. But do you know what? So now through Twitter, through, um, you know, sort of online, whatever, kids are able, to, as, is, as is everyone, is able to be up to date to the minute. Which is wonderful. I've been following the Winter Olympics, and you know, you, so you can still hear the the cheers coming. By the time it, it's just wonderful because we we get instant access. Um, many kids say that they um, use social media to relieve the boredom, um, which is fine, and it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, see a load of people sitting on a bus; they've all got their noses in a phone whether or not they should be reading a book or doing something different, which like we did in the olden days is a time for, a, you know, so that's another sort of post. But people, you know, people do go to social media and can waste hours on social media just to relieve the boredom, just to, as I was going to come to the next point, to relieve that FOMO, the fear of missing out. But there are hassles and there are pitfalls and danger areas that we need to protect our kids from not only can they be harassed not only can they be bullied not only can un undesirable people pull them uh you know so get their information online don't forget if you're showing your child in their school uniform you know oh, here's little tommy in p1 going to his first day at school many people will now know where your child goes to school that might not be a very good idea. Um, and sadly, what also we're finding is that self-esteem and self-confidence plummet because when we are addicted to social media or we look use too much of it, what happens is the fact that we, pr we compare our black and white lives to everyone else's technicolor wonderfulness. So, you know, you see someone, you scroll through Instagram and all you see is lovely pictures of someone on holiday um, and you think, God, why am I stuck here? Or someone is just having the best ever cinnamon scone with a, um, with a beautifully whipped cappuccino and you're sitting there with your glass of water and, and an apple and having a horrible time. So there is that danger that we, we lose perspective on what's going on and kids are no, no different. And actually kids need to realise that this... This window into social media is not um, real life, which is a bit of a shame. So what, what can we do? Well, let me take a slurp. Um, the thing is, is that what, what, what you do need to watch out for is because your kids have grown up with this, because your kids have grown up with the internet, and it doesn't, we're not talking just about, you know, it could be emails, it could be... Um, software uh, um, programs, it, it could be anything, Excel spreadsheets um, or Canva, which is a, a, a pretty sort of uh, make, a pretty making, so you can do lovely photos and stuff like that, um, or YouTube or Tinder or whatever. Your kids have grown up with this. So as far as they're concerned, it's the norm. And invariably they don't realize um, that there are issues. So if you then come down with them, you know, with a rod of iron going, well, there's no way, I hear that this is really, really dangerous and there's no way that you're allowed to use it, then that just builds secrecy. And I tell you what, there'll be four steps ahead of you. So what can we do as adults? I keep saying, and I, I always say, is, is your parenting, as far as social media can, is concerned, is the very same as your parenting style for every other um, area of life, be it sex, drugs, booze, whatever, um, or if it's partying, or if it's studies, or if it's sport, you know, it's it's your 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 approach is probably going to be fairly similar. In that, if you are the sort of person that needs to be hands on the whole time, then you are obviously the sort of person that is probably going to be mon monitoring your child and watching their social media usage. And that's fine. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that, you know, if, you, if you're making sure that they have their five a day and have a clean pair of knickers on every day and brush their teeth ten times a day, then you're going to be peering at them with a, you know, with a magnifying glass as far as social media is concerned. Other people might be much more relaxed and just go, do you know what? They'll find their own way. They're doing OK. And I trust them implicitly. And if that's the case, then you're probably not going to be so... Um, 
you're probably not going to analyze and scrutinize what they what they're up to so i think really is what's the best for me kai is well it's it's however you sort of normally parent anyway um but i would just i just want to furnish you with some of the information and some of the results and some of the statistics and some of the pitfalls so that you're going in with your eyes open and so then I would suggest you communicate your worries with your child. So rather than saying, well, you're, you're absolutely not allowed to do this anymore. Well, I'll go, yeah, right, whatever. Of course I won't, mum. And then they'll disappear and go and do something without your knowledge. Because as soon as your kid has a device in their hand of their own, you're not going to monitor it and they hide it and they're very, very good at it. So I would say get an understanding for yourself, but also to... Just be aware and, and whilst you are educating yourself, also remember that your child needs to be educated. Um, what I have got here in this, Kai Graham, uh, the, the teen toolbox, um, I've got a full chapter all about understanding social media. So, And this is also geared towards the younger ones. Um, because many kids, when they, am I old enough to go on Facebook yet? Um, and once you sort of finally grant them access, they just go straight in and sort of, oh my, I'm here, I've arrived. And, and, and they get over excited and sort of share absolutely everything on social media and forget that they should be using privacy settings and forget that they shouldn't actually be saying we're about to go on holiday and have a lovely time and the house is empty. And they shouldn't be saying what their date of birth is and, and, and what their you know, favourite passwords or whatever, or they, because all this information is out there forever. So in my book, it does give you a full chapter of what to look out for. And, and um, I, I give you a mnemonic called safety. So it tell, it, 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 and it's well worth looking at, actually. I'm not going to go into all the details here, but it, it's safety stands for, in my book, security, anonymity, the false environment, everlasting information, timing, and why for yourself. And it's all about how children and parents can support their children in maintaining control, um, making sure that a child shouldn't share their personal details, making sure that, you know, probably four hours a night is not fantastic when you've got maths assignments the next day. Um, you know, and explain to children that, you know, virtual reality isn't reality and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So the stuff there for internet safety um, and, and, you know, sort of how to discuss social uh, uh, social media with your kids. But I would say the big thing is to become involved. Now, if your child is lovely enough to friend you um, or allow you access, do not start commenting on their posts because you will be defriended very, very quickly. And if you don't know what defriending and friending is, shame on you. Well, you should do because you're watching this on Facebook. Um, but um, I'll be uploading this onto YouTube as well. But the point is, it is no longer okay in my humble opinion for a parent to say oh no you see that's just a technology and i don't quite understand it I, it is your responsibility to understand it you know that's like sort of saying oh well i'm going to put my child into you know sort of i don't know oh cycling on the road oh no well, you see i don't quite understand the highway code now they should be all right if i do i need to get them a, do i need to get them a helmet for their cycling you know it's you wouldn't do that so as far as social media is concerned you need to understand what is going on and you need to understand the environment your child is is opening up to now i think i did a poll earlier on in the group to find out um how you know sort of what what ages your kids were the majority of you were um 12 to 14 year olds your your kids were so this is probably very apt for a lot of you um anyone else who's got older kids then um you've probably got a fair understanding but it's it's worthwhile as a reminder and those with younger kids thank you for liking this i appreciate that um for, for those with younger kids, never ever too late to um, cotton on to all this. So I am really saying the important thing for your relationship with your child and their safety is for you to become involved and talk. Talk, talk. It's so important. 
there's no point restricting it because, as I said, they will just become um, sort of more secretive, which doesn't help anyone. Um, just watch out, really, because, as I said, the, 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 top, sort of, the top problems with, with, um, with social media and all this sort of access to it is that our ch ch your child is open to cyberbullying. What is that? Online bullying, where they don't even know who's being shitty to them. Um, but also they are open to, for whatever reason, be it too little sleep or, or feeling in, of feelings of inadequacy or whatever it is, rates of depression and anxiety rocket. So as a parent, it's worth watching out for, are they sleeping okay? Are they eating all the right things? Has their behavior changed? Are they having mood swings? Are they not wanting to go to school? Are they getting a sore tummy every time they have to sit next to Stacy in maths or whatever it is? And it's just, you know, maybe they don't want to get the bus home, but whatever it is, it's working out if there's anything that's changed in your child's behavior, in their outlook, in their demeanor to think, hang on a minute, this has got to be a red flag and it's just acknowledging okay well if that's the case I need to find out what the flip's going on here yeah so just pay attention and one of the big ones is wait for it parents is to limit your own usage the last thing your child wants is to come in from school to tell you all about their colouring in or to sit down and say, listen, I, I had a really stressful maths lesson or whatever it is. And for you to go, uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just checking my emails. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if they don't get your attention, as far as they're concerned, let's face it, your phone is more interesting in that than them. So therefore, well, their phone's more interesting than you, touche, and, and stuff it up you, because that's the way it works. So, okay, I've got some little icons here, and really what I want to do is run through some of the Facebook apps for you, so you can, or oh, sorry, some of the apps, um, social media apps, for you to sort of go, okay, right, you know, this is... It, the point is, is that I'm going to name a few, and some of you'll know and some that you won't know. If this is going out in a year's time, the list could have changed. So there's no point in me sort of saying, here's the good one and here's the bad one and stay away from those because no sooner... I, I mean, I did a list yesterday and, and then I found out that two of them have already been, you know, sort of deleted. Um, but for every app that's bad, then once it's deleted, there will be other ones to come in its path. But the point is, is for you to be able to say... Sorry, that was a call just coming through. I thought I was on um, Do Not Disturb. Um... So the point is, it's important to say, what are the questions I need to ask in order to keep my child safe? Yes, um, many um, media, social media apps are great for community. And this is one of them. Yeah, do you recognise that one? Hurrah, Facebook. Facebook's not a bad, um, it's, it's not a bad in, in, in the sort of, you know, in the, in the echelons of social media, it's, it's one of the good guys. Though many of us will think, well, bloody hell, can't stand all the advertising that's going on. Don't like the algorithms because I'm not seeing, but it, from a point of, there's far too much fake news. Charlie, good to see you. The point is, is that um, Facebook's actually one of the good guys. Do do. It's not bad. Um, it, and, and one of the reasons is, is because it's moderated. Yeah, okay, it might take a while for them to sort of, you know, realise you, you've been spammed or hacked or whatever, but they do something about it. Um, and Facebook does create a sense of community. Mwah! Of course it does. We're in a Facebook group. How wonderful is that? It's free. How lovely is that? Um, apart from when you start doing Facebook ads. Um, but it does have privacy controls. The one thing that I would suggest to your kids is to say, listen, hang on a minute. Just watch out about this. Because if you take a picture of Sensei being sick in a bath or whatever it is, um, that will be online forever and future employers will be able to look at it. So it's not sort of, you know, it, it, even though it feels safe, it's not always an ideal situation. Um, but it does, you know, the thing, we, we understand Facebook, so we think it's all right. And there are lots of other ones out there that we haven't heard of, so we think they're bad. Um, I would just say, well, let's look and see how each of them perform. 
um, you know, and, and, and yes, Facebook does have moderators. Yes, it does have um, ways that you can report spam. Yes, it, you are able to block people. So to an extent, you can feel as safe as you can be online, but to remind your child, A, to do the privacy settings and B, to be very aware that um, who they let in have friends of uh, who might be slightly more, you know, a dubious um, sort of... Uh, uh, lineage than, than they know. They might not know who your friend's friends are. Um, so, but it is moderated. So Facebook ain't a bad one. Instagram. Do -do 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 -do. Now I love Instagram, probably because it's much easier to understand because it's just visual. I can't be bothered with all the, the, the words and stuff. So I love Instagram and it's quick and I love looking at anything to do with Whistler. And anything to do with good food and a few flowers and that just makes me feel happy so I love Instagram but parents work watch out there is something called Finstagram and what it does is it allows your child to have a f uh, not only an Instagram account but a fake Instagram account and that's the sort of the one that mum and dad don't know about yeah um, it is owned by Facebook if, in case you didn't know, Instagram allows you to have private messaging. So, um, well, as does Facebook. But it's just, you know, the thing is, do you trust an 18-year-old? Yeah, you might do, and that's absolutely fine. Do you trust, a, 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 let's say, an 8-year-old to do Instagram? When you think, oh, look, it's got to be safe because it's just pictures. Well, mm, yeah, possibly, but, um, yeah, well, it, it, it's up to you, but it's, it's worth knowing. Um, I don't know how moderated it is um it's got to be better than some but it you know it's 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 pretty linkedin yeah that's pretty cool that's just for sort of what you your, your young kids won't be interested in that because it's far too boring though they have introduced video in that but that in instagram is great for um your child when they are starting um looking for jobs and creating a professional profile that hopefully doesn't have people being sick in a bath in it if that if that makes any sense um pinterest is again rather visual and very fun um but just watch out and yes it, the, the, there are sort of moderators and people are making sure that the content's okay but watch out when you search for something a bit odd because you can get sort of not you know the thing is for a lot of these and it's worth saying you know when they say that the, the, these ones that I'm mentioning, which are the good social media, they are the good social media apps, um, that means they're good for teens. The point is, is that there's a difference between a young teen and an old teen. Um, you might sort of think, oh yeah, my child's old enough to use Instagram and she's 12. Yeah, they might be very pulled together. But there are adults who are using it and so therefore just remember that the content might not be age appropriate and that's that's the same as that's the same as the internet so if you're wanting to put parent controls on your um on your uh, computer or on your device great but as soon as your child gets a device of their own they're in trouble so pinterest is lovely but it might just have a bit of adult content there so just be very wary all of which, I hasten to add, needs to be discussed with your child. YouTube. I love YouTube. It's the second largest search engine and the majority of the people that use it are teenagers. And it's bloody brilliant because it basically says, I mean, do you know, it's something like 94% of young people will rather ask um, questions of YouTube than their dad. And it doesn't matter is, you know, anything from tying a tie how do I tie a tie? Oh, well, if I can find out in YouTube in two seconds flat, don't even have to ask dad. Or, I don't know, hormones or, or sex or smoking or alcohol. The majority of the questions are asked by teenagers and it's on YouTube. And you can literally, how do I wire a plug? Well, I mean, we don't even do that nowadays, do we? But it's all available. It is hugely informative, but it is extremely time wasting and you know once they start sort of asking one question they'll click on another link and suddenly they're into watching a movie on on youtube or they're watching reviews of something else on youtube and remember it is all this all this will have adult related content 
and it's it's a matter of protecting your child and and you know rather than you are not allowed to use youtube well i wish you luck with that one um you know but it's it's just being mindful and and having those conversations and just keeping the options open and speaking to them. Um, Twitter. Now, a lot of kids sort of go, you know, oh, yeah, one of my mates uses Twitter the whole time. I can't see the point of it, really. Um, it is the, the, the good thing is, is like many, uh, like many of these, it's tied to your identity. So if you put a tweet out or you're being a bit of a dick, then people know who you are. Um, so you can't, it's not very easy to troll. So that, that sort of reduces the risk of cyberbullying, but I'm not saying it, it totally does because we've heard of many celebrities that have been stalked and trolled and whatever. Trolling means someone's saying something shitty and, um, you know, uh, and, and disruptive and, and negative and just not very nice. So, um, yeah, it, it can be seen by everyone. It, it is very, very fast. So if you sort of do a tweet and... Um, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's dif disappeared off your timeline, you know, sort of seconds later because there's your people's feed because um, it just, there's just so much traffic on Twitter. I, I sort of use it, but I fire stuff to Twitter. I don't actually sit on it and do terribly much myself, if that makes any sense. Um, and then the last one is Facebook Messenger, which I absolutely love um, because, again, your... Um, your identity is linked to the comments that you make. So if someone sort of says something horrible to you, then you know, this is Facebook Messenger, Facebook chat, um, then you know who's saying it. Now, so invariably, the, the, the point is, is saying to your children, make friends with people you know, not people you think you know, because, um, you know, someone that might look really hot calls himself, you know, sort of, I, I don't know, Robert, and he looks, he's got his abs showing, and he, he's probably not 18 at all. He's probably 45 sitting in his wife fronts in Arizona. So just watch out. You, you know, unless you know them, the advice to kids is don't friend them because God, you don't want them sort of, sing or your your own personal stuff i have had the misfortune of people messaging me who have somehow slipped through the net um and you just the nice thing about it is you can block them and you can get rid of them and um you know just report them to facebook and then what happens is they shut down their account and open another one you wouldn't believe the amount of friend requests i get from naval officers or colonel in chief who are standing beside a battleship or an aircraft tank and and standing in all their regalia someone photoshopped a picture of himself shaking hands with barack obama i mean really um those people don't in my book see the light of day on my timeline they get sort of blocked and whatever which is fine but sometimes kids can sort of think oh my god they look really nice they look harmless and they're jolly well not actually so the point is that yes there are good facebook apps so those are the good good face uh, good sort of um social media apps i keep saying facebook so that's the big one but there are good social media apps and you know there are many that i haven't mentioned but that's all right and and it's just a matter of just reminding your child that these are the good ones because they are moderated because they can do something about um spam because there is less of a chance of anonymity that said my daughter was in a uh, uh, i think they used to do um groups for messenger yes they do because i use them on families um and she was excluded and people started talking about her in the group that she was in and then it was oh my god we didn't realize it was the one group and you know so it all gets really bitchy um but then that's real life that's what happens um in the playground as well as social media but the it, it's just arm your child with with the, the the problems um the fact that all this that is online it might and we'll talk about snapchat in a minute you might think it's deleted uh -uh. once it's out there it's out there and, and and anyone that has the wherewithal to do it can pull information back at the drop of a hat um so just be wary also many of those good um those good apps facebook messenger um yeah, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, 
Instagram less so, but Facebook, they're, they're all being abandoned by the teens because us olders think they're really, really cool and use them a lot. So why on earth would the young ones want to use them? So that's a slight worry because then we're pushing our kids into the slightly more risky, the slightly more risky apps, the bad apps, which many of these names you'll know. And um, it's not that they're appalling but it's just the problem with the, the sort of many other apps is that you're able to share your details more openly and the thing is you know at least with Facebook you think oh no no, no I can pr do privacy controls and only my friends can see that though I have 4,000 friends 4,200 friends and I would say I, I, per I know them face to face oh I would say about five ten percent of them maybe more 25 percent but you know I, I I've sort of you know for my business I am I am reaching out to lots of other people I do vet them first but I wouldn't really want to share my address with them I wouldn't want to sort of tell them you know too much about what's going on so do remember that a lot of the people that they might be on your friends list um do you really know them so it's worth it's worth telling your child that the problem with many of these not so great, I call them the bad, only because good, bad and ugly sounds better. The problem with these is that they are unmoderated, which means anything goes. Um, and yes, there's still the permanence, but you, you're, you're, if anything goes, your, your details can be shared across different users very, very quickly. Um, now, one of the this is this is called Facebook Messenger for kids. It's okay. Um, this is really designed at younger um, younger sort of kids. And what happens is that they get a friend request, but the friend request also goes to the parents. So the parents then just have to make sure that um, they they can grant access or not, as the case may be. That's absolutely fine, but I'll tell you what, what soon happens is that your child just stops using that one and starts using Facebook Messenger and they allow anyone that they want in. So just to let you know, but it's it's a good start anyways. It may, maybe that should be an all right one. Um, house party. That is, um, that really is an app, which is many, you know, like many of them allow video chat between little groups of kids two to eight or something like that which is fine if you know everyone involved and if you sort of just make sure that you know if it's not safe the point is is that if you're using that and there are others where you think you're having a video chat with sort of six or seven people and you're just all sharing it how does your child know that someone isn't recording that so if you're sitting there going, oh my God, I really, really fancy him and I just wish, oh my gosh, you know, and, and that's recorded and then gets messaged to whoever she fancies. Or it's, oh my God, I can't stand Stacey. Did you hear what she said to me yesterday? And then Stacey gets a copy of the video that's been made. So it's all very well saying, yes, I trust them implicitly, but we know what friendship groups are like, especially when they're younger. We know the bitchiness that goes on behind and the, how some kids pull strings and how some bullies, you know, and if your kids think they're safe because there's only, oh, mum, it's all right, it's only seven or eight of us and we know each other. Just, yeah, fine, cool. But would you say those things in front of one another if you were all sitting in a circle? And many kids go, oh, God, no, but, you know, it, it sort of gets deleted. Well, no, not if some bright sparks decided to um, decided to record it. Now, many of you aren't going to like this. Minecraft, it is the best selling PC game ever. I'm so glad this wasn't about when my kids were, were um, younger, though... Um, you know, they all used everything else as well, so it didn't matter. But Minecraft, it again, if, if your kids aren't sort of totally savvy and aren't, uh, and, and if they're sort of suffering from self-esteem issues or whatever, as, as wonderful as Minecraft is, and I know many, many people have no problems on it, many ha are um, bullied. Have, have have you know sort of have have received 
inappropriate comments or unkind whatevers so um that's that that can be you know sort of just worth watching out for and i let's not say okay minecraft is not to blame it's the people using it but the point is is that when your children are online they are susceptible to bullying and because minecraft is used by God, half the blooming population. Um, it's worth just drawing attention to all this. Also, um, there is, don't forget, adults use Minecraft, so there could be inappropriate language. Oh, mum, of course I've heard the F word before. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But you might not want your child sub subjected to that uh, on a, you know, and there's all other stuff going on. But, and, just to say, also is not hugely secure, and uh, many kids have had, viruses hit their laptop great if it's the family computer as well watch out for that one. Oh, i needed that this one musically i think that's how you say it basically what this is it's a lip sync app and i'm sure it's absolutely hilarious i would love it too the point is is that there's nothing wrong with it, but it's it's just being aware of what's going on. This is a lip syncing app, so you can, you know, well, it does what it says on the tin. But great for teens, maybe not so great for tweens, because it is, um, you know, it might not be age appropriate. Do you want to hear your child lip syncing to rapping songs that have the F and C word every other you know, whatever. So watch out. It might be a lovely, great, fun game or, or app, but is it age appropriate? Here's another one. Periscope. I used to use this a lot. Um, it's the video app that um, Twitter provide. It sort of was, it, 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 it was just before Facebook Lives um, and it was really had potential for going really, really big. And then sort of, I think Facebook Lives overtook it. But um, it's not moderated. I had loads of people when I um, was broadcasting like I am here on Periscope and the amount of propositions I got. And it's easy enough. You swipe and sort of block them. But it's just not very nice to have to endure. Um, and there is, it's open to bullying. And as is everything. But there is another app that your child may be using. I'm not saying ban them. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying be aware of that's what it is. You're not going to like this one either. Do -do, Pokemon Go. All I need to say about that is, you know, my son uses it. He's 24. He's fine. He, you know, but I know that many people use it when when it was when it was new. There was all the rage of, um, you know, this. Oh my God! An oddish has just been seen in Central Park, and and you know, it could take you some very fairly dubious locations in search of. Uh, I can't remember what half of I used to. Do you know what? I used to know every single Pokemon inside out and I could draw them as well. Um, anyway, I, don't, I can't remember them now. That's that's the wonder, wonders of um, not needing to know trivial information any longer. Um, but the point is, is that you might um, you might be sort of drawn into sort of fairly, fairly dubious or unsafe locations. And predators know all about that. So, you know, watch out. Tell your child to behave responsibly. SMS texting. Okay, it's relatively safe. It's a bit hard to track. Um, the point is understanding that your child, well, you know, actually one hopes that your children, unless they have unlimited texts um, that through their phone tariff, that they're actually using something different that's free. Because um, I have had the, um, the misfortune of having to fork out for a bill that was in um, when we were abroad because the only thing that worked was text at vast expense. Um, so watch out for that. It's relatively safe. It's all right. But people can be open to unkindness and bullying and whatever. Um, I think the thing is with most of these things is it's all very well to say that some apps are, are age appropriate and some apps are, you know, mod, you know, sort of um, moderated for young people. But they, people can lie about their age, you know, um, and and so it doesn't matter if you say, oh, no, no, only 12 year olds use it. Yeah, whatever in your dreams babe but um so it's just sort of being aware that there is actually no crossover for you know at 
45 year old can be using it and a 15 year old can be using any of these apps and so it's just arming your child with the knowledge that just watch out <sighs> snapchat now this is the big one now because it's not well it's semi-permanent so what happens is that within 24 hours whatever has been posted disappears really screen recording ever heard of that yeah so what they say is that that um, oh no it's absolutely fine it disappears and then it, it gets deleted and that's that's great if you look at snapchat now and it's the one that most of the kids are using because the adults aren't anywhere near it so hurrah of course they're using it the point is is that there are things i think it's um if you go and sort of look on discovery it you can you can sort of see all the um you know what's trending at the minute and it could be i mean after oh god can you believe it after the um baftas and the brits it was here were pictures of um if anyone could see up holly willoughby's skirt i mean really um and you know sort of how the kardashians are doing this and i mean it's really not role model stuff but it's it's whatever's trending so it could be um it's just not really likely to be very age appropriate and no it doesn't disappear and if your child does not have the um uh, the, the privacy setting set up, then anyone can see where they are. And what happens, and I think it's something like it's geotagging and stuff like, who on my friends list or who, who, who's in the area that so I can hook up with them. And dear God, if, that, if your privacy settings aren't set up, then any old Tom, Dick or Harry can find out where your child is at any time. So it's fine if they're at home, but if they're sort of walking through the park or whatever, just watch out. Mm -mm, TBH. To be honest. Do you know what this is? It's an anonymous... Um, uh, uh, it's asking people to reply anonymous, anonymously to polls. Well, if that doesn't have bullying and cyberbullying written all over it, I don't know what bloody well does. So you can, you know, it's anything from just my bum not big in this or who thinks Stacey's a cow or, you know, who fancies, I don't know, you know, the latest Olympic athlete. It doesn't matter. But the point is you reply anonymously. So you can say whatever you like and you can receive whatever anyone feels they want to say about you. Hello? Well, that's not very nice. And it's anonymous. So your child doesn't know who's being horrid to them. And finally, on the not so good apps is WhatsApp. And I know, I know you're all sitting there going, oh, no, 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 there's nothing wrong with WhatsApp. We've got great family groups and it's a great way of just chatting and, and um, you know, and, and it's a great way of, of sort of getting to know who's doing what and just all keep in touch. Great. Absolutely great. But I'll tell you what happened to me recently is that someone sent a round robin because she was just asking for advice to every single person on her contact list. And I think there were about 400. And I was one of them. And so everyone that she sent information to had my details. Because what you can do is contact sharing. Oh, well, hang on a minute. No, no, I, I might not like that. Yeah. So it's all very well saying, well, I tell you what, no, we've got, we've got, you see, and what they also have is family groups and breakaway groups. So here's one without great aunt Maud in it, or here's one without dad in it or whatever. And so, and you know, so it just breeds secrecy and you might think it's absolutely lovely. Yes, poor old Stacey. I better think of someone else, haven't I, Lisa? Um, but do you know what I mean? So the point is, is that it's all very well that you think it's safe. But actually, someone might have slightly less stringent rules about sharing information than you do. And they, oh, no, but it'll be fine. You know, well, it's, the information's all out there anyway. But the point is, is that's just, you know, it's someone's idea of that's OK might not be your idea of that's OK. So watch out for that. So those are the not so good. And here are the downright bloody awful ones. And I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to show you, um, I, I couldn't be bothered to cut and paste all these. These are the bad ones. These are the ones that you need to look out for. Um, but no sooner are they uh, removed and other ones come into their place. But 
the problem with many, and, and this is a lot of them, and many apps are just created, they are unmoderated, they have inappropriate content, you are wide open to cyberbullying, um, you know, the, the list continues. And I'm just going to rattle off a few, some of which you'll go, oh my God, yeah, you're quite right. And others when you'll sort of go, oh, well, yeah, well, we use it and it's not too bad. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine if, you, if you're not experiencing problems, but I just want you to be aware of the pitfalls. After school app, oh, you know, and this is, and, and I'm not even gonna tell you what half of them do, but after school app, Ask FM, challenges. I'm gonna tell you about challenges app. Every so often an app comes up and it's, it's, it's basically about a challenge. And what it does is it says to the, to the users, right, okay, I want you to do a number of tasks. And what, there was one, I think it was called the Blue Whale Challenge, and it says you've got to do these tasks. Da, 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 da. And you've got to stand up in public, and you've got to, I don't know, run around the downstairs of your house with your knickers on your head, whatever. The Blue Whale app, the last task was, I kid you not, Oh God, it, I just beg his belief, commit suicide. And, you know, what, what more do you want me to say to that? And that's what kids were buying into. There's another one called the Tide Pod Challenge, which was daring kids to video them eating a laundry detergent sachet pod. Do you know what I mean? The ones with the liquid in it. The ones that you do your, you know, the aerial or something. Seriously? I mean, that's just life-threatening. And these kids are doing it. Because, oh, I know, but no, but they did it and he was okay. So, you know, he, he survived and so he must be safe because, because it was all all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, good luck with that. And kids are feeling pressured into doing it. It's the peer pressure. It's, oh God, you're such a lumpy pamby and open to cyberbullying. And because of the anonymity, it's, oh God, look, Joanne wouldn't even do that. You see, I've moved away from Stacey. But do, do you understand what I mean? The pressures that kids are under, but socially to conform, socially to do all the right thing. Well, now they've got blimmin' apps that are challenging them to do life-threatening and in some case, take their own life. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I just don't even know where to start with that one. Um, there's one called Bumble, Gather, IMVU, Live Me, My Lol, Marco Polo, Ogle. Oh, there's one at Saraha that's gone, but there'll be something else to take its place. And all these things are, you know, allowing people to comment um, behind, you know, behind a fake ID or anonymously, which is even worse. So your child has no bloody idea at all whether or not it's whoever they sit next to in maths or a pervy someone in wherever. They have no idea who is passing comment about that. And that is what breeds the insecurity. That's what breeds the anxiety is, did that comment come from a friend of mine? Yeah? crap is that so yes we do need to protect our child just to say listen don't forget these kids can be horrid but they might not even be kids they could just be trolls they could be because I've had people come up on my feed say some fairly crappy stuff and you just thought, god really you've got nothing better to do but kids can take this personally and that's the problem and they take it personally and think that it's them and that's what we've got to stop. So share the information with your child. Um, all these anonymous apps, where did I get to? Secrets, Slingshot, Spot a Friend, Tinder. I mean, come on. Fine if you're a divorcee looking to find company and do whatever you're capable of doing. But even then, meeting up with someone that you don't know, we need to protect ourselves. I remember, um, it must have been about seven or eight years ago and um, I was sitting at breakfast time and I said to my kids oh my god I've got a really exciting day today there's a photographer friend of mine and he's coming into Belfast and he says he's got half a day to spare and would I meet up with him and Alice and Jack went do you know him and I went well no but he, he's he's in the group he's he's in this group and you know we're all photographers together and Alice went are you having a laugh? And I went, well, no, not really. I was m meant to be meeting up for, with him. And, 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 and Jack just sat there and shook his head. 
and, and I suddenly thought, what the hell am I doing? And I'd, I'd agreed to meet this guy because he was, I was like, I'm a grown adult. And I then sort of thought, actually, hang on a minute, I'm being bloody stupid here. So what I then, I went into the forum where he was and I said to a few of the guys that I knew, do you know this guy called Andy? And they went, uh, no, never met him actually. And well, do, 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 do you know this guy called Andy? No, but he's been in the group for a year or so, but no, I wouldn't know him. Would you vouch for him? Don't be so stupid, Kai. And I suddenly realised, and I'm sure he was a lovely guy, but I suddenly realised I was going to meet up with a guy because he was in my group, and I'd never met him, and any of the people that I, I, I spoke to hadn't really met him and had, couldn't vouch for him. And there was me doing that. And I was meant to be a semi-educated, know-what-I'm-doing type woman. Well, anyway... I cried off and I gave some stupid excuse and I probably wouldn't have ended up in the boot of a Volvo hacked into five pieces, but at least I could guarantee that if I didn't turn up, I wouldn't be. Do you know what I mean? So it is worth telling your child that watch out because even they, you know, because that's what grooming is all about, for God's sake. And what happens is these people, I'm not saying that darling Andy was anything like that, but it just shows how blinkered and stupid I was and so imagine what a 12 year old who's feeling pimply and fat and suddenly being told by this 18 year old hot guy that she looks really cool and lovely and sexy yeah I rest my case so just warn your kids and tell them that who they appear to have giving them attention online they, they're, they're probably fine, but no, don't even go there. So I, I listened to my kids who were infinitely more intelligent than I was on that score. So there's Tumblr. I know lots of people use Tumblr and lots of people love Tumblr um, because it's all about blogging and it's all about sharing information. The problem is, and I don't think you, there's anonymity, so you don't have to put your own ID attached to it. The problem is, is it, for many situations, if you go in the search bar, it's not very age appropriate. <laughs> so when I sort of... Um, I was a, a photographer in a former life and um, I was doing boudoir photography. Oh my God, you don't want to Google that. And, and likewise for Tumblr, it was God, right, okay. I didn't want to see it, so I certainly wouldn't want my kids to see it. There's other ones called Whisper and Yubo and there, 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 there. I mean, there are, there are apps that encourage you to start rumors about other people. I mean, what, what is that all about? Seriously. So, you can understand why I'm trying to warn you about the pitfalls of the good, the bad, and the downright really ugly, horrible, horribleness of what the internet can offer. And yes, the internet can offer some wonderful things as well, but go in with your eyes wide open and let your child go in with their eyes wide open. Um, keep the conversations you know just just keep them going there are there are apps that look like you see the thing is, is there's no point me telling you all these apps because you go oh no i'm going to look out for one of the logos that kai told me about because that's a bad one yeah do you know what there are fronts so that it can look like for argument's sake a calculator app and it's not a calculator app at all do you know what i mean so they they know ways around it they they just um they can just, they're, they're five steps ahead of you. So rather than ban them, rather than tell them they mustn't, it's, it's working out. Now listen, we need to chat. How are you keeping yourself safe? Because your safety is of paramount importance to me. And I can help you through that. Chapter 10, all about understanding social media. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a different, will have a generation of idiots. That was a quote attributed to Albert Einstein. So even he knew the dangers of technology. Um, having said that, my darling, I was going to call him a son-in-law. He isn't yet. He's Alice's um, other half. Um, he was showing, he sent us a, a, a GIF or a, you know, a video of 3D printing. So, oh. It was mind blowing. So there are fantastic things with um, the internet. There are fantastic things with with technology, but there are also not so fantastic things. And your children need to be aware of them, and you need to support them. So 
on that note, don't let me scare you away because of it. Um, it's just being slightly more savvy. And um, even if you just say to your kids, listen, I need help. I, yeah, this woman was talking about social media and I can't even do X, Y and Z. I can't tag a friend. Will you show me how? And then they can just... Just let them into, or they can let you into their world. And you don't have to grill them, but it's just be there to support them and just say, do you know, I've, I've heard that, you know, God, it was on the news yesterday. Um, what was it? Girls on the Edge, that uh, there's been a 60% increase in self-harm and um, depression, uh, self-harm admissions into hospital for uh, young girls between the ages of 16 and something. I mean, really? It's hard out there for them. So I think it's we need to support our kids rather than come down on them like a ton of bricks going, you, you know, we can't wrap them up in cotton wool. But what we can do is say, do you know what? This is what real life's all about. And um, if someone says something shitty to them, to you, then it's their own stuff. They've got their own rubbish going on. And, and we just need to build our children up and support them. So I hope that's helped. Um, yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments and, but it was just, it's just a matter of just saying, do you know what, social media is here to stay and here's how we can support our kids, use it for their benefit rather than, um, you know, adding them to the statistics. That's a pleasure, Sylvia. Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've been looking like. Munch is really, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's scary, but also I think many of the things, I think a lot of the problem is, is that we fear what we don't understand and what we don't know. So when we, we when we sort of get to grips with it and realise, well, there are many things we can do to protect ourselves and our children. And don't do what Kai Graham was going to do and meet some stranger from a photography group, because yeah, I'm sure it was lovely, but at least I, I didn't have to worry about my safety I just didn't turn up on that note I shall love you and leave you have a fantastic weekend um, and I shall speak to you all very very soon all right bye bye